welcome to what episode is this? Eleven, I believe. Eleven. Eleven of the trade podcast. We're talking about comics, making them, living it. Uh, we've got Melanie Chitwood and Robert Trithart here uh, with me. I'm Carrie Potter at junipercomic.com. Melanie's at steamandnonsense.tumblr.com. And Robert has two websites, rightthenshine.com and chanceofdoom.com. And this is going to be the episode for the first of the year, so we're going to do a little retrospective about our year and what we have planned for next year. So let's start with Melanie, who's probably going to have her start date sometime next Yay. year. Yay! Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> What's been going uh, on? Well, um, I was been working on trying to launch uh, there in... Uh, this year here in 2013 and uh, unfortunately I had gotten injured and then I kept getting sick right around the injury and uh, that's pretty much almost stopped me making comics at the moment and uh, launching it. I, uh, so I'm hoping by the first that I'll have launched. <laughs> so are, you, are you working on your buffer presently? Yes. Okay. Uh, I do have the first two pages made, but like, it, like we had discussed in previous podcasts, I'm not going to put it up until I have enough of a buffer there to cover me because I just keep getting sick anyways. You know, life does that to you. Yeah. How many, uh, how many are you going to do a week? Uh, just to start, I'm going to just do one page a week. Mm -hmm. and I, I want to go up to two a week, you know, once I get a routine down and really established. Yeah, it's it's. I think baby steps are good when you first start something, just because it's like you really don't know how things are gonna shake out until you actually start. And so it's probably good to do the dry run on just one update a week if you are unsure. Yeah, just to I see think. how how many you can get done in that week. And I don't think it's as important anymore. Like for. More traffic, certainly it's good, but like I don't think it's as vital anymore to do the daily updates that me our predecessors were used to doing mm -hmm. before. So I don't know that it's really too big of a deal if you start out with just one. It all depends on what you're trying to accomplish with it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think it really depends upon the format you're going with, what uh, writing style you've got to start out. You know, because I'm doing a long form here. Yeah. So. You know, that's going to be a slow uh, build on the audience and build on the story to begin with. Right. Um, the gag a day, you know, you're you're going to be uh, all right. Just start off right away, and you can actually build an audience pretty quickly that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it still takes a little bit of work and everything, and, and I, my audience is still not that big. But, um, yeah, it's... It, I think that maybe Gag a Day lends itself a little bit better to more frequent updates. Depending on how complicated, like if you were doing a long form but your pages weren't too complicated, I think you could probably jam out a page or a small group of panels every day. Um, how many uh, how many pages are you going to have in your archive, archive when you uh, open up? I want to start off with 10 at least. Yep, that's exactly what I've read before about how you can start. Uh, yeah, it's... yeah, yeah. That way I can get a little bit of story there. You know, kind of give mm. them a, a nice little dollop. And yeah, book people and keep it rolling from there. Cool. Part of me wishes we would have done that, but I was so by the time we were ready to post, I was so raring to go. I think uh, I don't. Th I don't think that I could have could have been talked out of it to. Not start. Oh, you get so excited doing it. I mean, it's so much fun. So ready. I was so excited, and we'd already done. Yeah, well, and then we we'd already done a uh, girl. Oop, cut now. Oop, you cut out, Carrie. Are you no. Still there? No. <laughs> okay, yep. we can hear you. There you are. Yeah. Okay. Yay, technology. But <laughs> we didn't want to lose the momentum of this Girls with Slingshots guest spot thing we got. And uh, so it was like, let's post, let's post. And uh, I think that 
Sarah would have wanted to wait a little longer, but I was pushy. <laughs> when did you do that? Uh, I don't sure. think we had much of a buffer. Uh, we we did we did two. We did one in May of last year, and then again I think in November of last mm -hmm. year. Okay. And yeah, I did, uh, I did mine in May. We didn't. So. We didn't. An, oh, okay. Yeah, so I hope she does another one of those. There was there was another call for guest strips recently, I, or like maybe in the summer, and I didn't do it because I couldn't think of anything good. <laughs> I didn't. So. I didn't even see that. But anyway, um, yeah, they go quick. Um, anyhow, well, she, um, gets, well, she gets some really good ones in that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two times we did it, it was a lot of fun. It's also a good way to get some audience built. But um, it is important to start with a buffer, I think. And if I do do another strip someday, I'm going to do a buffer for sure. It's just kind of a giant pain in the tushy <laughs> to not have one once you get going. Um, and especially if you can anticipate that you're going to be sick or uh, kind of regularly out of commission, it's probably a good idea to think about... Uh, doing a buffer. So do you have anything else planned besides uh, starting in January? You got yeah. uh, well, losing number two. Make strips and see how it goes or do you plan on going to any conventions or um, making any t shirts or plushies or whatever? <laughs> I'm just asking. Well uh I'm not uh I'm just gonna uh I'm gonna come for E C C and uh March, <coughs> but I'm just going to go more as a spectator and go poke everybody in the head and go, hi! <laughs> I'm going to go crash on Carrie's couch and uh, be surfing yep. the couches. It's okay, I've got a comfy Sounds couch. Fun. Yay, comfy uh, couch. I'm so conflicted about wanting to go to cons just because of how much money it costs to set up a booth, and I'm just not sure... Uh, I'm just not sure how many people would come out to see us, you know, or like how many people would just take a picture of our merchandise and move on. And I don't, I don't, I don't think we would break even probably if we did it. Yeah. But maybe I'm, I have not yeah. much faith in humanity as I should, but I don't know. <laughs> well, that could be accurate. <laughs> Pretty accurate. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's um, good to break even, conflicting but, you know, accounts. can't necessarily expect it. Um, but the experience yeah. is, is good. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should get a booth, even you know, an artist alley table. Um, yeah. Just to, just to do it and see how it goes. And mm -hmm. uh, since it's such a big con, it's really hard to get in, like initially. <coughs> to get mm -hmm. a booth table, or at, like on a on a main floor. Um, yeah. So once you once you get in, um, they give you an application right after the con or during the con and you get to register pre register for next year and it gives you a, a better spot, better chance oh, of cool. getting in. So nice. Um I think what I would want to do is get enough comics to do a book first. Yeah. Like see if we could kick start the book and then if that funded and sold, um, we'd kinda know that there was interest out there in our stuff. And then we could think about doing other things. Um, like I'm kind of more interested in doing a book rather than little bits of merch, but I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I think people generally like things like buttons and pins and stuff, so that might be a good way to go. Yeah. Like little cheapy like throwaway stuff. things. Huh? People like small stuff. Yeah. You know, if they're if they're well, not familiar with your comic, if they don't want to buy you know a huge trade paperback or mm -hmm. uh, t-shirt right. unless it's really funny. Or mm -hmm. yeah, that really fits home with them, so they might, you know, pick up a flyer from your table, or you know, get a sticker, a button, or something. Yeah. Um. Do I sound choppy on your guys' end? I think my internet might be being ridiculous. Tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah, you are a little bit, hun. Is it just me? Okay. Um. Would you mind inviting me back into the room if I if I fix my internet problems? It'll okay. Just be like half a second. No, you can't okay. come back. Thanks, guys. <laughs> ah, once you leave, you can never come back. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, let's... 
Did it work? You're here. Hooray. Here. Am I? I see you. Internet, what the hell? What the hell, everybody? Oh, uh, now it's nicer. Yay, that's good. <laughs> Lord. Is there a thing calling me? Well, hang on, I don't understand you. Okay, well, I'm going to ignore your call. Cut out. What? What? Um, like, I think earlier in the year I was thinking about, like, oh, what if we went to a convention and everything? I just don't, I'm not sure. Like, we're only really in the middle of year two. We started in May. Um, and so year two won't wrap up until this next coming May. And uh, by then we should have enough-ish comics to maybe do a book. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe just a small, small... Yeah, like a really... like the Well, I think the problem is that if you do a really small book run, like it's <laughs> more expensive the fewer things you do, I think, right? Yeah. And so if you do them in bulk, they're a little... You get more value, I guess, for your money. Um, so maybe I'll just ask my very quiet readers if uh, they would be interested in the book and see who, who crops up and says something. Is that what you're planning on doing next year? Yeah, maybe. Year? I mean, me and Sarah definitely have to sit down and, and talk it out and everything. Um, like, next year, I really have been wanting to make a cast page and kind of buff out the website and make it a little more clean-looking and um, all that stuff. Um, Sarah's currently planning her wedding, and so uh, <coughs> she may I be indisposed. Huh? I keep telling her to just elope and save the money and have a big party at the end and invite everybody There's, and go, oh, by the way, we're already married. So, ha! Uh -huh. There's definitely something to be said to that, but then you have, like, pissed-off family members. Um, Me. But, yeah, Melanie says <laughs> Sucks to your family members. Um, but uh, I think that she will be largely indisposed for uh, the better part of the year, especially once it gets closer and closer to her her wedding, uh, just because I've done that, and it does get balls crazy at the end. Um, you guys so, need to go ahead and do what you want to do early, then. You should yeah, do it maybe you know, so. late, you know, beginning part of the year, basically. Mm -hmm. Have her sit down and write out five, ten strips with you. You know, yeah. go ahead and get a bunch of strips at least written and thumbnailed out. Hey, I'm two weeks ahead on writing. <laughs> draw out uh, your cast page, how you want it to look, and kind of yeah. do Yeah, I mean, can. we've had sort of a, like a, like a mock-up collecting dust in one of my Dropbox files, um, but, or folders, but, uh, I don't know, like, uh, we just haven't gotten around to it, and, uh, kind of trying to find, uh, Time just for critiques lately have been has been a little bit challenging, but I do want to start talking with her about you know what we're going to do about the website and what we're going to do about merch and do we want to do a book and all that fun stuff and uh, figuring out how to use Facebook to its fullest advantage um, is a, like uh, on webcomics.com I think Brad Geiger suggested using Facebook sort of like you use Twitter. Yeah. Which I'm really super good at using Twitter because it's sort of like under my own name, uh, and so I can just say stuff that's happening to me. But I think with the Juniper Facebook group, it's like it's kind of unclear. It is mostly me uh, doing stuff, but since it, the little handle says Juniper, it's a little bit unclear who's saying what. And I think that it I'm kind of weirded out that there's not a good way to sort of distinguish personalities on there unless you sign the bottom of your comment, which is, I guess, a thing we could do. You but, could do that. Um, have you set up a separate Twitter account for your uh, comic yet? No, it's just been <laughs> like... Because you could set that up and then connect it to the page, so anytime you do comments on Twitter, it'll automatically uh, post it to Facebook. Maybe. like, And that was another thing he suggested, is to not have it all be a to uh, shop talk, like, yeah. not all announcements about, you know, your the stuff you're doing, but just be, like, funny, engaging things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm just not quite... I haven't figured out quite how to 
Mark you need to talk ideas. about the dynamic between you and Sarah and how you work out doing mm -hmm. the comics together once in a while and kind yeah, of throws those good. two bits in. Yeah. But see, that's hard, too, because that's sort of like talking shop a little bit. You know what I mean? Like what? Like with Twitter, like yesterday I commented that like the the bakery students uh, coming out of the Art Institute sound like they're talking, like they talk about bakery class like it's potions class from Harry Potter and stuff like that. Like, uh, <laughs> And so just like funny little things that I think about and uh, just randomly post and I feel like maybe Facebook should be a little bit more like that, but I don't know. I'm just having a hard time with it because I've always used it for announcements. Well, so. I connected... I connected both, so anytime I do uh, anything on Twitter, it automatically puts it on Facebook for me. Mm -hmm. And so that way, I, I, I'm not having to, you know, go through and redo it and redo it and redo it on different mm -hmm. sites. It does it all kind of. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Uh, I connected my Tumblr to it all too, so anytime I post to one, it does it all to the others mm -hmm. automatically. Yeah. Um. And next so year it's also. Like that, but. I think it makes it a little easier and utilizes it a little better. Yeah. I was always thinking about, like, audience growth for next year. And I'm not, like, I have a couple ideas about what to do on that. Like, well, I want to do, uh, <coughs> excuse have me. Have you thought about read it? Oh, read it? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, but, um. <laughs> I know a lot of people that uh, post up on Reddit, too. <coughs> Like when they've updated or introduced themselves and kind of have some interaction there, and that has grown their uh, business a lot. Yeah, it's so Girl. hard because Reddit can be a really strong. <coughs> Sorry, can you repeat that? There. Um, kind of Texas place at. <laughs> Gary, you're having issues under certain internet bubble. Gary, <laughs> <laughs> Gary, are you there? Stop. You're talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Robert. What is your plans for the year? Ah, oh, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> okay. What? Uh, you, you we cut we you cut out at what you were saying about Reddit. Ha. Huh, okay. Well. Anyway, I'm apprehensive about Reddit. How about that? <laughs> um. Let's. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see about Reddit. <laughs> um. What were you gonna say though, Robert? Uh. You mean what I was gonna do this year? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, hopefully. I'll stir the comic strips uh, back up again. Um, I guess. Uh, well, okay. This this last year, 2013, I uh, started Rise and Shine again in April, and uh, I made it with weekly updates until October, uh, when I uh, needed to start looking for a job, and that's when I stopped doing Overcast as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was going to be a month when I before I started posting again, but here it is, December, and I haven't even started. Um, so I have to um, start writing and, and drawing again uh, to get up a, another buffer, hopefully start posting uh, as, as soon as possible in the new year. Um, but uh, I am planning on... Uh, getting an account, or I, I have an account at uh, a website called Patreon, which is um, it's kind of like a Kickstarter for for um, small projects, but it's not like people give you money for you know this book at the end. They give you um, maybe like fifty cents a dollar, three dollars for every you know web comic you make or whatever. Uh, Every post that you uh, make, or you know, any significant update. So it's it's more of a uh, incremental um, uh, fundraiser. Um, hmm. uh, the web comics will will always be free, but for the people that you know donate a dollar for every every strip I post, they'll you know get something extra. They'll like get the strip a day earlier or something like that. Um, nice. So this month, December, I am going to. Um, 
uh, make a video for that site and um, set all that up and get it running so that I could actually, you know, maybe support myself on drawing comics. Cool. Very neat. Can anybody do that? Conventions and whatnot, so. That's good. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> it's I, I keep getting this thing. Well, my internet keeps crapping out. Maybe because it's cold outside. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows with this thing? And it says, due to, due to the number of participants in this video call, your microphone is muted by default. And I was like, this doesn't look like it's muted. So. <laughs> I don't even know what yeah. that means, Google Hangout. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, Google well. Hangout, you're always going to be so much fun, aren't you? <laughs> Listen, Google Hangout. <laughs> Get your ish together. Um, that sounds good, though. Um, what was I going to say? Something profound, not about my internet connection, I'm sure. Um, How about, um, can I ask you... This is the glitchy episode? <laughs> yeah, this is the crappy glitchy episode. Sorry, guys. Hey, Carrie, can you yes. tilt your uh, cam down a little bit? Oh, so you don't keep staring at the top of my head? Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah? Your chin was cut oh, off. So. Yay. <laughs> um, awesome. Oh. Oh. Can you do it again? <laughs> it's like weighted in the back. What the F is going on here? Earthquake. Ah. <laughs> what an effort. Shaky cam. Oh, cam, I swear to God. Well, maybe we'll just stare at the top of my head forever. This is a glitchy episode. I'm blaming it on Robert because it's easy. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> nope, nope. Maybe I can raise my chair up. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I win. There you go. I win. Okay. Um. <laughs> um. What was the other thing I wanted to do this year? Something. I wrote a wish list one time. I do want to post twice a week eventually. I'm just not sure how we're going to work that out with our schedules being so different, but we will see. But it would be nice. Um, but that would also mean, like, I've got other other artistic projects going on, and it would mean I could do less of those. And I'm not sure if I'm ready just yet to give up on those things in order to do more comics, even though the comics is kind of first priority. Mm -hmm. But I've been having a lot of fun doing the coloring book. And um, have you thought about putting out an art book of <laughs> just yours? Nope. I never feel like I've got enough stuff that people would be interested in. Like I, <coughs> I feel like most of my stuff is like doodle quality, but maybe not. I could be selling myself short. <laughs> we all do. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Maybe you can get my even <coughs> more. Come on, chair. Come on, chair. Okay. Um, that could be <laughs> that could be an idea, though. <laughs> I was thinking about doing a portfolio again. Um, I haven't done one since like high school, and it wasn't even the best back then, because I mean high school. But um, and trying to get some fat, some form of art employment. <coughs> I don't really have an art degree. I don't think a minor counts, but. Uh, you don't need an art degree to do art. Yeah, I know. But like, oh, uh, like, I don't think you need an art degree at all. All the art degree means is you had the time to put into making a portfolio. Yeah, that's true. And that's pretty much all it does is buy you time mm -hmm. to make the art. And yeah, you do learn things in school. Sure. <laughs> if you actually take classes and you pay attention and study and, and whatnot mm -hmm. and practice. Um, yep. I mean, I'm glad I went to art school. But... Uh, the degree isn't really doing me anything at all. Well, my English degree hasn't helped much either. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not just you. Hey, um, my graphic design degree doesn't do anything either. So, you practically no one of drawing, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, because <laughs> first I was like, I want to write because I'm also the writer for the comic. But like, at at no point in my English degree did we ever talk about like sequential art writing. So, mm -hmm. I mean. I was so well prepared for this. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I do reception stuff uh, for my day job. So I'm sure that it helps for writing emails. Mm. But, <laughs> grammatically correct emails. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, It seems like with a lot of 
a lot of job things, they want you to like have a bunch of experience already or uh, certain degrees. Um, so that's kind of rough. But maybe if I get a portfolio <laughs> together, uh, it'll kind of speak for itself, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Art book might not be a bad idea. I could even just do like a like a PDF thing and sell it for like, you know, four or five bucks per PDF. And it could just be a buyable download or something to save myself mm -hmm. some money. So yeah. yeah. Might not be a bad Those idea. Those printing costs are really kicking in the ass. Yeah. You've done a book, right, Robert? I've done several, yeah. Okay. Is it like is it really rough on the on the wallet? Yes. Okay. Very much so. Is it uh, worth it? Do you feel? I really like having a an actual physical copy of the books, mm -hmm. and um, I was really proud of it when when they came out. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, there's there's a problem with doing reprints and mm -hmm. uh, you know selling them. Like book number one came out in like two thousand or something like that, and mm -hmm. I had I printed out a thousand of them, um, mm -hmm. and that was quite a lot of money at the time I didn't have anything but um, you know I ended up paying it off and I actually ended up selling all of the copies and I had to do a uh, another another print run um, but with um, with that in mind I got number two printed and I got three thousand copies because the price point was was great you know from, mm -hmm. from one to three um, but I'm still sitting on four boxes of well. number two that were printed in you know 2002 or oh, four, I don't remember when. That but sucks. um, but yeah, I'm still sitting on copies and. Yeah, well, at least you have them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still sell a few of them here and there on the website mm -hmm. and maybe at the convention. <laughs> but um, yeah, you could be like the old school stuff peddler at like county fairs, where you're just like yelling at people <laughs> to buy your stuff. Waiting it in their face. I Good actually time went to, to uh, buy it. You could do like that one girl I talked about in an earlier episode who kind of pressured me into buying one of her books, and I did it because I was feeling really awkward. Just make people feel really awkward. Oh, it'll I can't, I it'll damage your rapport with your readers, but you'll sell I a book. I do that. <laughs> I would rather have them walk away without the book than have them walk away thinking that I'm a pusher. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was um, super, super awkward. Yeah, I, I actually went. I went to um, what the hell was the anime convention in Seattle? Sakuracon. Um, the Kurakon, and uh, I went there with my girlfriend and a box of books and handed them out because I Excellent. it was either that or throw them away. You know? Well, yeah, better that somebody have them and just sort of go, yay, a free book than yeah. Them. That's kind I of I did actually have uh, one or two people come. Uh, by the table at Jet City or um, Rose City and say, hey, you know, I got one of these handed to me for free. I, can I get the first one? Oh, cool. Well, <laughs> you could do something like that and like, give them the fifth one or something or the fourth one and just be like, hey, hey, we got one, two, three now. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately, I only have two. <laughs> well, you, that works then. But I also did All a, set. <laughs> I also did a, um, a collected uh, Rise and Shine book um, that was a uh, trade paperback size. Uh, it got like a hundred or you know two hundred fifty something like that made, and they sold out. And I wasn't gonna uh, make any more, but I had a, a fundraiser uh, for that, and that was pretty fun. Nice. Because uh, I, I certainly didn't have the money to get get all that made. Yeah, yeah. I'm I am I have concerns about doing a, a print run of a book. Um. Oh, it's so I'm, hard. Like, how, how do you gauge demand? Like, how do you do? You just go for it and see what happens. Well, like, um, take pre-orders. Yeah. Tell, tell your readers, uh, hey, I'm gonna make this book. Uh, if you give me ten bucks now, you know, I'll mail you a copy. It, it'll be like a sort of a Kickstarter, but not, you know, using mm -hmm. Kickstarter. And then, um, you know, build up some money. Uh, that way, and you know you'll have that many sales, and then you know either look at you know, like double it or triple it or something, and mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. It's a good one. Um, 
Yeah, that's what I did I with uh, the... Well, that's why I like the idea of Kickstarter, though, <laughs> for a pre-order like that. If you don't get enough money for your first book run, then nobody's actually put their money into the pot, technically. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you figure out how much the, how much so the book is going to cost... So that's how you really like, gauge it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, figure out how much the book is going to cost, and, um, you know, either uh, triple that or quadruple it, you mm-hmm. know, depending, and then just charge cover price for the people that are, are going to pre-order it, and then you'll have some money for, you know, three or four times the amount of you know, the product, and you'll just have those extra, and all that that you sell will be profit. That might not be a bad way to go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I think that I think that by the time we're, we're at, you know, the two-year point or the two-and-a-half-year point, we'll probably have enough content to make a book. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I guess that's kind of looming in the next year or so. Um, I guess just know, don't be afraid of it. <laughs> yeah, L- maybe looming is 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 fear language. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um, damn it, there was something else that I wanted to do this year. It was a good thing, I'm sure. Um, grow audience. Not sure quite. I was thinking about doing some kind of little ad campaign, maybe through Project Wonderful or something, and seeing if that helped at all. Um, we've probably been hovering at about 350 people a week that are consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get little bumps and stuff now and again, but we've been sitting right at that mark for you know months, and so I'm thinking that something needs to happen to kind of bump it up again. Right. And I'm not sure if I'm not sure if if an ad campaign is the way to go, but um, I have clicked on comic ads before if the if the banner was nice enough, you know, and the banner matched the art when you got there. But um, do you have any um, do you have any uh, ad banners on any of the other sites? Like um, um, uh, what the hell are they? I mean, there's Project Wonderful and there's there's um, uh, Ink Outbreak. Um, We're on Ink Outbreak, but I guess I was using it more as like a sort of like a comic list because for a while I was I was submitting us for comic lists, and we really get very scant traffic from them. Um, like I'll look at our analytics and do right. the little traffic breakdown. And I'm like, oh, good. The comic, the web comic list, two people in the last month. So it's, I think that we're fairly buried. And all of those people, those the, those yeah. sites are huge. Oh yeah. So uh, there's even, a problem with that. Even if there's one or two people on those lists that, <coughs> that click on, you know, that's, yeah. that's another couple of readers. Yeah, um, I mean it's definitely working. We've got three whole ink outbreak followers. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember how many I have. I haven't checked it in a while. But uh, I want to tell you three. both about um, uh, Comic Rocket. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with them. Yes, I think, um, I think that I'm on there. They just uh, launched, as in like a few months ago, they launched their ad uh, ad network, mm-hmm. uh, or relaunched it or something. And uh, if you host one of their one of their banners, you will get 15 cents for every 1,000 impressions, which is really really good. Interesting. Uh, I just. I'm- just signed up for it again, and uh, I have one of their banners on on uh, both of my sites, and uh, the money just started started coming in. I mean, not that it's you know dollars oh, or anything. An avalanche. <laughs> an avalanche, but it, you know a, pe- a a penny avalanche. Yeah, uh, a penny lanch. Um, penny lanch. Veritably buried in pennies. <laughs> yeah, which is it, it, it's a lot more money than I uh, got through Project Wonderful. Yeah, I've been making like like. Actual <laughs> on Project Wonderful, and I I don't know I haven't uh, I haven't delved into that too much. I've been so focused on just creating the best content that I can that I've been sort of ignoring the periphery stuff for a while. Um, so I need to probably look at the bids and do some stuff with the ad box or make it bigger or like add some more or something mm-hmm. like. No one flipped out when we put an ad box on our site. Like, our readers are generally really quiet. Like, we'll get maybe like, like four comments a month or something, and they're always decent comments, and they're always sort of like, 
engage like you can tell by them that they're engaged in the project and mm -hmm. everything um but they're few so i figure we're not getting flames we're not getting hate mail we're not getting like you know crappy yeah, things on our facebook so i think we're pretty good to go there but nobody <laughs> made a stink when we put up yeah. that ad box i think we're safe and you're worrying too much about it um Probably that's that's a carry patented I mean, approach you know, to life. People going around the internet and they see ads everywhere, and if they see one or two on you know your site, I don't you know if they start bitching about it, and say, well, why don't you give me money for for this? Comedy? Yeah, pay me to not have this. Um, I have a <laughs> a phrase pay, that one of my best friends. Yeah, three. You know. Well, nobody's gonna do that for me, I don't think. But my my best friend. I, I think uh, you should put a tip jar up. Yeah, tip tip jar is good, you know. Really? Um, I don't know. But yeah, my my best friend in New Orleans uh, once said to me, uh, "Free equals shut the fuck up." <laughs> yeah. So basically, that's all you have to say to him. Man, that happens. Like I order food for people at work uh, for meetings and stuff, and it's like it's free for them, and they complain about it, and I'm just kind of like, "It's free, you guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> don't eat it if you don't like it." You know. Free so that's a, shut the fuck up. Just yeah, that is a great phrase. Yeah. <laughs> One eight hundred free or shut the fuck up. Yep. New T shirt. There you go, Robert. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, with my luck, uh, people will look at it at the convention. And they're like, "Aha, that's really funny," and then walk away. Well, well, not without taking a picture of it first and showing it to all their friends when they get home. Fortunately, I haven't had very <laughs> many people do that. Okay. I've done that two products, not at Comic Con, because I've only been once, and I kind of understand that that's kind of shitty. But I've I have done that two things in like grocery stores before. Like, no, nah, this is dumb, and then I send it to a friend. <laughs> but, uh, but <laughs> yeah, I don't. But know. there's a difference between doing a, a big box store or some sort or something, and doing, doing, doing it to an some independent guy at Comic Con, some and he's yeah. a tiny, tiny yeah. business dude. Yeah, that's true. Tip jar, huh? Yes. Maybe. Do it, woman. Hmm. I wonder if anyone would give me a tip. My grandma would probably give me a tip. My, gra <laughs> my grandma totally reads the comic. And yeah. she likes it on Facebook every time. Thanks, That's grandma. Aw, cool. <laughs> <laughs> grandma. Yeah. She is way internet savvy. I'm so surprised and pleased. I, I had to teach my father how to be internet savvy. Well, it's important. But um, now, now you can't get him off any of the uh, truck <coughs> or anything. Either. <laughs> oh, I, I've got pictures now, uh, Robert. I, I was just going to say, speaking of your dad, did, did he take, uh, take him down? Yeah. yeah, I've got a bunch of them with him and the decoy ducks and uh, some of the shotguns and my Boy. dad. Standing there in his uh, camo coveralls and rice right, sitting right there in his pocket. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I I even made Ray the little uh, blend in beard, little elastic <laughs> beard. That's awesome. That's very cool. I can't wait to see the pictures. Yeah, I gotta get doing, them all uploaded though. Doing with goth, what goth kids do best, which is duck hunting. Duck hunting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I see the dolls on a on a trip. Backwards. to... Say. You know, experience everything, so mm -hmm. you know, why not? Oh, man. Yep. Uh, natural environment and swamp <laughs> duck hunting. Actually, I don't know where one duck hunts. I would assume around water. Yeah, probably. I'm the worst. Yeah, duck, duck hunting is around water, but <laughs> I win. <laughs> Yay. Yay. You're uh, in Arizona, right? Or New Mexico, sorry. New Mexico, yeah. Yeah. I was saying, I, I didn't know there was water in New Mexico. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of uh, misconceptions about New Mexico floating around, Melanie. you gotta you got to represent. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I constantly get a lot of them. Um, I've actually get, been getting emails. Uh, I set up my Facebook page. I, I've got my own artist page on Facebook. I set up a public page. Mm -hmm. And uh, I put it on there. I'm from New Mexico. I live around the Four Corners area. And I get people asking me if I've got my green card. Ha! Uh, I speak nice. really good English. Um, I mean, <laughs> bad stuff. And I, I ask, you know, a bunch of fuckers. you're from Alabama? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, have you seen a map? Ooh. <laughs> <coughs> some some cultured gentleman uh, hitting you up on Facebook. 
Yeah, it's been. It's oh boy. Been... Yay. Yeah, I, I think the worst I would get is like, from Seattle, do you drink a lot of coffee? And I'd be like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Is it really uh, yes. all the time? Yes, overpriced yes. burnt yes, coffee. Yes. <laughs> Not all of it's burnt and and overdone. Just Starbucks. Um, but yeah, is it cold? Yes. <laughs> uh, all of the all of the stereotypes are true. Are people cold? <laughs> yes. Yeah, most most people assume uh, uh, it's a hardcore desert, like you know you would imagine the Sahara or something. <laughs> and like no, no, this is a mountainous desert, and they're like, how can it have mountains? It's a desert. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh, it's called temperate climates. It, there's think, many of them in the world. We have seven of them in my state. I imagine New Mexico being a lot like eastern Washington in my brain. Kind of scrubby and deserty and and hilly. But Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely more scrubby, you know, down in the lowlands than the highlands. You actually have, you know, pine and uh, juniper mm. and uh, cedar trees. And uh, we have rivers. We have a lot of lakes. Uh, a it's lot not a barren, of lakes. It's not a barren wasteland. <laughs> Unlike yep. and, Nevada, uh, which is yeah, a I mean, it really wasteland. depends on what part of the state you're in. Uh, there's several ski lifts around the state because they actually have high mountainous areas that get a lot of snow. Mm. And then, uh, you know, other areas, it's... Uh, when I went to college, I lived uh, down the highway from White Sands. There you go. And that was that was very desert. <laughs> so White Sands Missile Range and White Sands Testing Area and all that. Very, very interesting area to live in, uh, watching all the uh, big military shit go by. And you're like, I'm yeah. going to college? Um, move, <laughs> Mr. Ginormous Camo Truck. <laughs> uh, I see camo trucks like leaving Seattle onto the viaduct sometimes from work, and I'm like, "What are these guys doing? And where are they coming from?" It's so weird. Like it just doesn't seem like a thing that should be happening in Seattle. Like I don't know. I don't know. You should check and see what all bases are local to you. Being that you're on the water, you'll have a lot of navy. We've got Joint Lewis McCord, uh, or uh, yeah, Lewis McCord. Mm -hmm. uh, in Tacoma. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure. can't remember. Anyway. Oh, I know. Sorry. This is off topic, but kind of on our original topic, at least. What I want to do in January um, is hit up the <coughs> font sale. Font sale! Oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to get fonts, and uh, because I want to start doing a creepy comic eventually, and I want to get some I want to get some fonts for that. Uh, yeah. Plus, I love fonts. <laughs> A comic craft, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, every year, and for people that don't know, every year Comic Craft has a really crazy uh, New Year's sale uh, where their stuff is like actually like fifty and seventy-five percent off or something, and you can get you can get fonts for like twenty bucks, which which is insane. I think, um, I think they do it so that uh, every every year they they charge the year. Like last mm -hmm. year, they charged twenty dollars and thirteen cents for most of their single mm -hmm. count. Or packets or something like that. Yeah, and they're they're really really good quality fonts too. It's it's mm -hmm. the only comic booky font that I have on my computer presently. What is it even called? Let me look. It's it was free I think or like donation based. It is called da -da -da, Anime Ace. Yeah, that's a good one. And it's nice. It's just huge, and I want a narrower. Like more compact um, font. It's like Blambot. a really wide Blambot. Have you gone to Blambot? They have a mm. lot of a lot of really cool free. <laughs> um, I think something. No, I have been to Blambot. I think I went some to somewhere like there to. Uh, we were looking at <coughs> fonts to do the Juniper logo in. Mm -hmm. and we picked one that we picked one called Girls Are Weird, and that's <laughs> the font that the Juniper logo is in. I uh, like that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I've actually been figuring out hand lettering. Hand lettering is super oh, awesome. I'm things. a huge fan <laughs> of that. I got my Ames guide. Uh, yeah. And it actually, it's quite wonderful. Once I started getting into it, I'm like, 
oh, this is awesome. Yeah, okay. that, that little thing is, is, is awesome. So I'm unfamiliar with that. What is it? It is a little triangle. You can see it. It's got this little circle in the middle, and you can turn it, right? Mm-hmm. All these little dots. <coughs> mm-hmm. Uh, it's pre-measured, basically. It's it's ruled. It's along the side. It's ruled. Oh, okay. And, uh, all along the dial here, it's ruled out, and it basically gives you the size of the font as you draw. Interesting. It. So you can draw your guidelines, you know, mm -hmm. back and forth. You know, you got your T squared down. Hold it on the page. And okay, I want to do it at a size 7, so I turn my little dial to size 7. And uh, depending upon the row you choose, uh, you can get them closer or farther apart, you know, your current. Okay, so, so this, is a, <coughs> this is something that sort of measures out, like, the space between guidelines, so that you can adjust the size of your font, essentially? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's neat. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this was, oh god, this was made, what, back in the turn of the century? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's originally made. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually had, uh, my grandfather had one. I tried finding it, That's I haven't cool. been able to find it. Uh, he had done some drafting work and whatnot, and he had an old metal one mm -hmm. from World War I. Ooh. Yes, I want, I'm going to see if I can't find it. But uh, I got me a plastic one here to go ahead and use for now while I try to find the other one. That's but uh, uh, basically, you know, you set it up, you dial it into the size you want, and you kind of go back and forth, and you keep it stationary. You keep your uh, T-square stationary. Mm -hmm. As you're going back and forth, you're going to change holes, you know, draw your guide all the way up because it's already lined up for you. That's cool. And then it gives you your spaced out lines with spacing between your uh, sentences. Mm. And uh, that way, it's all set up already for you. Um, yeah. I was practicing with this. Uh, I had talked to, believe it or not, I talked to Dave Kellett about it. He was doing a Ustream a little while back here. Nice. And I was talking to him about hand lettering. And he said, basically, when you start out, just do all your letters in capital letters. Because mm -hmm. if you go back and like look at his work, for instance, almost all of it, <coughs> excuse me, all his letters are in capitals. Yep, I do remember seeing that. It's just, you know, if you want to make it, a, you know, maybe a stronger word, you embolden it, so you mm -hmm. draw it two or three times over on that word and that sort of thing. You can change it up or make it just a size bit bigger than the lines you originally mm -hmm. drew to kind of, you know, pop that word out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But overall, he said to just, you know, practice first. Go do, do your ABCs, your one, two, threes. Don't use lowercase because... Uh, a lot of times that just starts getting muddled whenever it gets all shrunk down and pretty. Yeah, I've I've sort of <laughs> played around a little bit with, I guess, really kind of loosey goosey uh, hand lettering. I I don't have tools like that yet, but I I'm fascinated by hand lettering in general, and uh, it does seem easier to control when it's all in caps. And plus, my my mm. undercase letters get really wide, and. Uh, I think the wider things are, the more difficult they are to read. So, um, but then again, this the more narrow they get, the harder it is to read too. They're definitely a sweet spot. Also, uh, my husband has fallen asleep and is snoring. So if you guys hear snoring in the background, that's my. <laughs> I've been uh, lettering comics in in capitals for so long that I don't think I write lowercase <coughs> in daily life. I I do everything in caps. I was sending Except out, for type, of course. Yeah. I was sending out uh, acceptance letters um, the other day, and I was trying to practice clean uppercase letters on the on the addresses of everything. Mm. <laughs> so, getting some practice in where I can. But I should get one of those. Do they sell them at like just like art and craft stores? Yep. Or mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, just go to the drafting section. Mm hmm. Because that's the tools I usually use. Is I use the drafting pencil. Mm -hmm. It's an exceptionally large uh, lead mm -hmm. that you can buy. Oh wow, there. that is yeah. super, uh, super that fat. Is, it is super, It'll super be a fat. Package that looks like this. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, and they'll uh, ones, yeah. you know, they'll have a drafting section. It'll have all sorts of different drafting tools. 
<coughs> it's where you'll find a lot of your T squares hanging a lot of times. Gotcha. And uh, there should be an AIMS guide, some of your different circle templates, things like that. Nice. Um, most of the time, most places group them all together. Mm. Uh, I have an absolute shit ton of different circle and oval templates, and I still find more than like, oh, I don't have that one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, like going to art stores, their candy shops. <laughs> I I think that uh, I think I'm gonna be stuck in digital for a long time just because I've noticed with my scanner uh, when I try to do um, traditional comics that <coughs> the scanner's so bad on my printer it is it makes everything gray and dumb. Like it does not. We're gonna need to get you a new scanner. So that's what you need it's to not do. Just a scanner, are. like not. I don't want a scanner slash fax machine slash printer. I want a scanner. Yeah. The okay. scan only. Uh, I feel like it. it's sort of a throwaway when it's a multi-purpose tool. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you need to put up for your tip jar gold. And <laughs> Listen, yeah. if you want me to do nice, nice traditional art, you got to buy me a scanner. I've, Is I've it weird? I bought mine for about 100 yeah. It's a good Epson one. I mm -hmm. really like Epson for a lot of their uh, electronics. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is a brother printer with a scan tray on the top. <laughs> yeah, it's really no, dumb. No, no, oh. bad. bad. <laughs> um, <coughs> is it weird that I feel weird about putting up a tip jar? No. Uh, you're just not used to being paid for your art. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm sure that is what it is. Well, yeah. There's that, and you know, I I don't have a tip jar on my on my site because I don't want to seem like I'm begging. You know? Yeah, I feel like I feel like in a way it's a form of panhandling, in a way. Like, like you should be paid for your work, but at the same time, and and I mean like that's a pretty common sight I think on to see on people's websites. I've seen it you know everywhere, um, and uh, I've heard of people uh, paying for their rent with tip jars. Mm -hmm. So I mean well, I think, there's uh, the merit right, you, in there. When you put it up, you should let everybody know, hey, there's a new tip jar on my site. It'd be great if you can go, you know, donate some money, but just, you know, leave it up and you don't have to keep telling people here, put you know Yeah, no, I don't think I would ever like totally beg like that. You know, like, oh hey, don't forget about the tip jar, still there. Hey guys. Look at the tip jar. You know, make a post about it every six months or something. And Put a tiny little five dollars in that tip jar. <laughs> yeah, Maybe I'll keep people that want to give you money will give you money. Yeah. And the people that don't have money or don't want to give you, then just they just don't. They just keep reading the comics. Yep, that's true. Well, I should. Why don't I have like a notebook or something? I don't want to draw. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to write on my Bristol board. That was expensive. Oh, here we go. An envelope. An envelope. Let's see. Oh, that's a dumb pen. Just writing notes on an envelope with Copic markers. I'm a genius. Let's see. Tip jar. Um, Prepaid books. What else have we talked about today? Awesomeness. Or a uh, pre-order, I mean. Pre-order. Ames lettering guide. <laughs> oh. Ah, Ames lettering guide. Ames lettering guide. Yes, I love this thing. Like I said, I've I've got to find some of the old ones. Uh, they're just really really cool. I don't know why. I really like antiques to begin with. My mom got me kind of hooked on them. And I've always been wanting an antique. Uh, I, I actually use an antique writing desk for my uh, computer desk. That's dope. Nice. Uh, this only... thing is from 1875. Oh. Cool. Did you carve your initials into it? <laughs> 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 like maybe. Uh, I think my only antique is my dresser, and I got it from my great grandfather when he died, and he was like ninety-five or something at the time. So hmm. I don't know. I just it's made out of like actual wood, but it's getting old. The last time we moved, um, one of the drawers uh, fell, and then just sort not it didn't break. It's just that all of the glue was so brittle that it just sort of like fell apart. It just went pet and just fell right. apart. Oh. So uh, you just need to get some wood glue and re-glue yeah, it back to my mother-in-law. Clamp it. Yeah, my mother-in-law is like MacGyver, so she fixed all of that stuff for me. Oh, cool. Whenever you're like, I don't know how to fix this, she's like, Don't worry, <laughs> I got this. Okay. You're like, Oh yes, MacGyver, yeah. yes. Yeah. 
She's great. Um, we talked about tip jars, pre-order books, Ames lettering guides, comic rocket ads, FOMO money. FOMO money. Do you have any ads on your website, Robert? Money. Sorry? Do you have any ads on your website? Yeah, I have uh, the comic rocket banner now. Um, I think uh, one or two Project Wonderful ads. Uh, I have what the hell is that called? Um, let me look at actually. Um, there is uh, an ad for my other comic, you know, so I can trade back and forth um, between Rise and Shine and Chance of Doom. Uh, and then there is... The typing is, like, with force. It's like... Gah, 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 gah. Sorry, I, I typed early. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> uh, oh, it's uh, this ad site here. It's it's called Hexagram now. Yeah. Um, I forgot what it was called before, but um, it, uh, it's just one of those exchange sites. You know, if you, you get a certain amount of traffic through people that click on the link that's on your site, then your ad will be placed on other people's sites. Unfortunately, nice. I don't get very much traffic through them, so I'm probably... <laughs> Holy shit, one of my banners is up to 50 cents. Woo! Heck ass. Um, Sometimes I top out at 5 cents. <laughs> yeah, that's what I usually do, too. <laughs> Maybe I should click on that and let people know. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I think I'm going to take, take this hexagram thing off. Um, I also have uh, the Gothic Beauty uh, banner exchange mm-hmm. on Chance of Doom, I think. No, uh, is that the thing you have going on Facebook that has like the big photo sets of, of all kinds of Gothic stuff? Or am I thinking of something else? Uh, you might be thinking of something else. All right, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's... I have I have several. Um I read somewhere, uh, it might have actually been in the Web Comics Handbook, um, where they're saying if you, you know, if you start out putting, uh, putting a website together, put ads on it so that people get used to seeing them, you know, mm-hmm. because you don't want to, like, have no ads and then have people get used to, you know, having a great site and then, you know, slap a big ad up on, across the top of it and we'll kind Yeah. Of, oh, what's this? I- yeah, I guess that's where I was going w- before with, like, I was I was a little concerned when we first started doing ads that people would complain, but they to- did not. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Took the baby step. I could say more ads on website. Yeah, I, um, with this either. Patreon thing, I'm going to, uh, you know, at a, at a certain point, like, one of my goals is if I get, you know, a certain amount of money per comic, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'll... If I reach that, I won't have ads on my site. Mm-hmm. Although the Comic Rocket one is really good. <laughs> I just put it up. I'm going to look into that. Amazed that it, uh, you know, 15 cents for every thousand views is nice. crazy. Nice. Might as well give it a oh. shot. Yeah. Yeah, this is what's cracked me up about the, the whole web comics thing as a as a like a business model is how many things you kind of go well we can try it you know <laughs> like nobody yeah. quite knows what exactly is going to work for every single comic out there so you just kind of go well I'm just going to try this and see what happens and not everything every one thing will work for every comic you know um, yeah exactly I think people get <coughs> discouraged about that sort of thing mm-hmm. um, I think it's easy to get discouraged I'm like oh it worked for these guys surely it's the same and it's like well yeah. it's not it's not though um, it's a yeah, that's, that's just it. It's all an experiment as you go. The mm-hmm. uh, business model for this hasn't been around long enough for it to actually be established in any way, and because the internet is rather amorphous, it constantly changes. Yeah, well, I feel like I feel like anything, any kind of, I think, like the 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 analysis of internet behavior, it's like it, it's only predictable up to a certain extent, and what goes viral and what doesn't and wh- and why it did it is kind of all a giant mystery half the time. Cats. Cats. Always with the cats. Well, we're shooing because we had cats earlier, although not on the show. We had cat show and tell before the show. Yeah, we had cat show and tell before we started recording. I cats. don't think Pepper's up for another cat show and tell. She's <laughs> having... It is bath time on my side of the bed over there. <laughs> so, delightful. And Mal is sleeping 
on the couch right now, so I'm not going to bother him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got both the money curled up over at the bottom of my feet, so I got warmers. Yeah. I wish uh. that Pepper would sleep on my feet. It is freaking cold in here. Stupid uh, I, countrywide I, cold snap. I, I brought the blanket, my uh, massive blanket of... Of imminent oh, doom? Yeah. Look at that thing. God. <laughs> so do you guys have a, a goal for next year for the podcast? <laughs> uh, we haven't really talked about it. What should we do? <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, when did we start posting? I think this is like March, March or something. Then. Yeah, March is when we first started posting, so we'll be hitting our year here pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, I I do want to revamp uh some of the uh the like uh audio uh podcast site mm -hmm. and maybe update some of the images for the uh, YouTube page. Mm -hmm. You know, little stuff like that. Um. Glamour shots? Should we do glamour I shots? <laughs> I went ahead and started monetizing on our uh, YouTube page. Oh, cool. Maybe it'll pay for itself. You never know. Uh, <laughs> I don't care I've been uh, trying this, to make certain it's all... Let's see. I'm, so, the, I'm the tech one here, so... Yep. I you, have to, <laughs> you have to pay to have a channel? <coughs> no, it's free. Okay. What so, do you, so what? what do you make the money off of, like... I don't even know. Off their ads, uh, you know, at the oh. beginning of almost all your videos, every time you go onto YouTube anymore, there's oh, a little right, right, right. 15 second ad. Uh, people get, make money off of that. Um, you can set it up where there's uh, kind of a little intro right in the middle. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it'll take a minute and run an ad, and then it'll go back to your regular scheduled program. Oh, man, that would make me want to punch a baby for sure. Yeah. I just did the one at the beginning because I was like, you know, people can opt out of that if they want to most of the time. Yeah, uh, I would opt like right, that, right the fuck out of that. Run ads on our page itself. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. No, yeah. Avoid that disruptive crap. And any rollover ads, that is my least favorite thing maybe in the entire world. That's an overstatement. It's one of my least favorite things on the internet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it so what about, roll over ad. What about, give it a shot, see what the hell. Yeah. What about guests or uh, ah. interviewing? Oh, let's see. Uh, you gonna, uh, uh, Shane and Garrity, uh, actually, she's emailing me right this second. Oh, no. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, she said uh, she doesn't have a Google Plus. Oh, she's got it set up. Let me hold up. She might <laughs> invite us. Get, get her now. <laughs> Invite her to cut the show in half and we'll do it with it. do two months in a half. <laughs> yeah, screw, screw this whole hour of conversation we've just had. <laughs> you can cut Dropping it, it off here. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm actually going to get a drink of water. Come on. No. <laughs> Tell. Oh. Too bad. <laughs> oh, man, I want water too, but... <laughs> Go get it. Go get really? It. Okay. Go. BRB it, listeners. Water time. So I guess this is going to be a slightly extra long episode, listeners and fellow watchy people. Uh, we've been trying to get Shane and Garrity on here for an interview, and uh, apparently we were having technical difficulties. Uh, Technical difficulties, like she didn't have an account or something. Uh, yeah, actually, she didn't have a Gmail one at all. So what's going so, on? So, uh, I got her to sign up for a Gmail account. I'm gonna see if we can't get her pulled on here. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys got water. My turn. Ha! Oh man, Dawn's so asleep right now. <laughs> it's nap time. <laughs> <laughs> Husband nap time. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this next year, but I I have reservations about how much we're going to be actually able to get done. So hopefully, hopefully it's a bit, at least a bit. <laughs> I think even a little bit of progress will help, including tip jar. <laughs> Might be okay. 
<sighs> like you're gonna have a jingle or anything? <laughs> a jingle, yes. Yeah. A it's Juniper theme ridiculous. song and its own cartoon. We're thinking big this year. Yeah. Cartoon Network cartoon. Awesome. <laughs> That's actually kind of how that idea of doing a webcomic in the beginning started was like me and Sarah were kind of miserable at work and we were talking about it. I'm like, we should just like think of a cartoon idea and do a bunch of art for it and pitch it to a like Cartoon Network or something. And they're like, or we could just make a comic. <laughs> <laughs> so. You end up making the comic. Think, think smaller. Yep. So I'm glad that we did though because I love comics like I don't love a lot of other things. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Listen, okay. I love comics a lot. <laughs> also, who's talking to me on Facebook? This is kind of like the equivalent of like weird like radio dead air. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah, I'm not used listening. to being on a, on a conversational you know, station. Eh. I'm used to just playing music. Oh, that's cool. We could bust out I could drag out my bass guitar and serenade you with just the worst bass guitar. Because I haven't played in like five years. Ugh. And I wasn't even that good when I was going originally. It would be the worst. I, I could probably beat the, the worst bass guitar because <laughs> I've never played guitar. Well, yeah. I mean, who knows? You could you could be the best at bass guitar and not even know it. I can't really get my, my fingers along. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is goofy. Or I have tiny fingers too. Hands like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> We're talking about the difficulties the of playing the guitar and of the bass. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, she doesn't have a microphone. Oh, screwed. All right. Well, yeah. maybe next time. Uh, let's see. She working on a laptop we right now. Skype one day here. I mean, if yeah, you're working on a laptop, it has to have a microphone in it. I remember when I was using my laptop for the first time, like, me and Melanie were talking. Like, it was the worst microphone in the world. Yeah. Like, I don't have much faith in this one either, but the built-in mic on the other one was just the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Skype and, and <laughs> Google Hangout aren't the... Aren't compatible, are they? Like, you can you? No, but I could probably bring her up on my computer, and you could still hear her talking. I hope it won't be like garbage. That's what it's gonna try to do here. Maybe. Um. Does she just want to not stress, and we can interview her next time, and she can have uh, like a a while to get get her stuff together to maybe do this? Yeah. Would that make her more comfortable? Let me ask. Okay. Like I don't want to pressure her into coming on if she if she ain't ready. Uh, fine. So for everybody who's still <coughs> listening, uh, we are going to uh, interview Shannon Garrity of Skin Horse, but she is having a couple of technical issues, so it may be saved for next time, depending on how things go. Oh Did you have anybody else lined up that you were thinking about talking to? That is Melanie's department. Who else do we were we thinking about having? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, hold on. Um, let's see. My list of spreadsheets. People. Oh my god. Let's see. <coughs> I have, uh, let's see, Katie Cook. What does she do? Uh, Gronk. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, I have... Give me a second here. Let me bring up my list. Uh, let's see, Art Baltazar. Ooh, that's a cool last name. He does uh, Tiny Titans. Ooh. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, Leah... Hernandez, uh, let's see, uh, Jessica Abel, mm -hmm. 
Uh, oh man, I've got a bunch of them. Nice. Cool. I've still got several more to last us through the beginning of next year. Awesome. So we still have several more months of interviews to do. Hooray! And or hangouts. And yeah. Or whatevs. I'm looking at Bart Balthazar's art because I have not done that yet because I'm a terrible person. Let's see. These are cute. Oh my god. Tiny Titans are adorbs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like Jessica and uh, Art there were all booked up until the beginning of next year anyways. So. Oh, okay. So I figured, well, well, we'll make them all our beginning of the year interviewees. Nice. There you go. And let's see. Oh my god, these are adorable. Everybody should look up Art Balthazar. Balthazar's Tiny Titans. Oh my oh, god. Oh, they are. They are awesome. Let's see. So cute. Oh my god. That tiny storm. They're like chibi versions of all the Marvel characters. Oh, I think I've seen these before. <laughs> yeah, he does a lot of published work. Uh, he's doing a, a little Hellboy right now. Oh my god. His little newest one. I'm dying a little bit because that's awesome. Little Hellboy. Yes, it is so cute. Oh my god, he's got Tiny Lobster Johnson. I'm so excited. <laughs> god. That makes me so happy. So yeah, <laughs> you know, we're gonna we we still have quite a few people lined up here for interviews. Uh damn it. <laughs> Tiny Hellboy. I've got a soft spot in my heart for cute stuff. <laughs> That's cute pretty good. Heart. Oh my gosh. Everybody who's listening, look up to Little Hellboy right now. And if you <laughs> love Lobster Johnson, you will love Little Lobster Johnson. Holy moly. Uh, well, what, uh, is, what does Shannon say? Uh, I'm waiting. Okay, because we're probably hitting about an hour and a half right now. No, we're not. We're not even hitting an hour and a half yet. No. Okay. Well, uh, we started late. Oh yeah, that's right. So we could consider. I actually have to again. get going pretty soon. Just okay. Reorganize my kitchen counter and do some grocery shopping and whatnot. Yeah, I I have also destroyed my kitchen so. That might be in my future as well. Okay. Um, do you need to leave uh, right now? No. Okay. A couple minutes is good. All right. Let me see Let if know. I can bring her in through Skype. Hopefully you guys can hear her. Hopefully you guys can hear that great snoring that's happening behind me. No, we can't. Okay. At least well, I can't. well, you're missing out. <laughs> Maybe you put the microphone up against it. <laughs> I wish my cord was that long. <laughs> I'm sure he, I'm sure Don would appreciate it. Well, he yeah. have to, to know he's been recorded. How to get in the wifely doghouse? How long is the cord on those headphones? You know, it's pretty long, but it kind of like goes behind my desk and down oh, to the, ba yeah. the back of my computer. So um, I've got probably good like maybe from like the the back edge of my desk to my head, like maybe f four feet or three feet, I don't know. Mm. Something along those lines. So a little bit of room, but... Kind of like DJ headphones where you can get about 10, 15 feet away. Yeah, I, I could not, for example, have a dance party in these headphones. <laughs> well, you could. Well, yeah, it would just be a very tethered, uh, low-key dance. <laughs> With them ripping off of my head every now and again. <laughs> it's all part of the show. Yep. Oh, Skype, you suck. Okay. Ha, see? Technical issues abound today. Oh, man. Uh, I'm <laughs> For some reason, it's not recognizing the password, so I'm trying to reset it. And it's not Locked accepting out. the reset code. Good, good. <laughs> Thanks, Skype. Thanks for nothing.
bastard. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, all right. So funness. <laughs> I'm sure this is like the best and most fun episode for everybody to listen to. Right. <laughs> or is there people listening live or is it like watching live on YouTube? I don't or? know. It, it actually is live on uh, YouTube, but I doubt anybody's actually watching, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if they were, they're not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, who the hell are these people? They're just dicking around. <laughs> Pretty much. Very much dicking. We should All we should it. change the name of the podcast to just dicking around with Carrie, Melanie, and guests. Although that that may that may uh, be the wrong idea for some people. Yeah. <laughs> dicking around is that like dick in a box? <laughs> mm, dick in a box. Oh, they'll they'll, wi they'll wish it was when when they listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My feet are so cold. I'm just going to have frozen feet maybe forever. See, that's why I hate winter. Uh, extremities always get cold and they do not feel warm again until summer. Yeah, I've had little feet scolds, which sounds delicious. Uh, forever. <laughs> <laughs> feet scolds? <laughs> Is that repulsive? <laughs> yeah, very much so. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. This may be the rat hole section of the podcast. It always happens. Uh, One time we talked about Batman's nipples. Now we're talking about feetsicles. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we were well, definitely that. talking about you know you could carve shit with fucking Batman's nipples. <laughs> uh, weren't we talking about the the Tim Burton uh, movies? Yep. And, Okay. I'm it is not recognizing any of the codes. Son of a bitch. I think that. So maybe is it that she doesn't have a G Gmail account, or, or what, what? It sounds like she both does not have a Gmail account and also does not have a microphone. So that might be. Uh, well, she finally set issue. up a Gmail account, but she does not have a microphone. Okay. Well. So I figured I would try to pipe her in through my computer mm -hmm. into the talk via Skype. Not Skype out. is not letting me in now. I think you may have broken the internet. I think I did. The whole thing. Actually, if anybody broke the internet, it was probably me for my, my shitty issues earlier. Well, if there's anything else, uh, I guess let me know when your next podcast is and if you get all the yeah. difficulties with your guest uh, worked Mark, out. Yeah. yeah. We will I'll, definitely I'll include you on the emails. Cool. But I think that... All right. Well, all right. You're going to go tackle that kitchen? Yeah, I'm going to tackle the kitchen and clean up some more. All right. Well, good have fun, and good seeing you, and thanks for coming yeah, and talking thanks. with us. No problem. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, hon. I can't see <laughs> those pictures of Rye duck hunting. Hooray. <laughs> I want to see those, too. And then I'll send you the uh, I'll send you the address for the next host uh, at some point. Okay. All right. See you guys awesome. Later. See you later. Bye. Ow. There goes Robert. Off into the great blue yonder. Or wherever Robert's kitchen has to, happens to be. Right. Well, how about this? Uh, since it may be getting slightly tedious for people listening to keep focused on things while we work this out, do you want to just end this episode here? And then if we happen to get Shannon's stuff working, we could start up another episode and just record that? Can if you want to. That might be the best way to go currently.
All right, you want to sign off of this one? The New Year's episode? Sure thing. Unra yeah. Unraveling slowly to an end. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening. Sorry for all the tech issues we experienced today. The internet, what can I say? Um, Robert has just left, but I'm sure he says goodbye, too. Um, so we will see you in February, and we will talk with uh, Shannon about Skin Horse. So come on back next time. We'll see you later. Bye, guys. Bye.